to be a barrier. Our first guest tonight here to discuss the state of the Trump border wall in the wake of the omnibus spending bill, President Trump's reported plan to push the military to fund the construction of that wall, and much more. Joining me, political commentator, best-selling author, Ann Coulter. Ann, great to have you with us. Uh, you have been critical of the president of late. Uh, broken hearted, you described yourself at <laughs> one point. Now, with a wall rising along that, uh, <laughs> that fence that you saw there. They're you... repainting some rickety fences, Lou, but. I mean, if it's not just another scam to keep us saying, oh, it's coming, it's coming. Um, yeah, he can use the military. Some of us have been saying that forever. He's the commander in chief. No legislature, no court can take that away. Um, he has full authority to repel an attack on the border. I mean, even though I was on a tweet storm last night, I got in rather late and I was a little <laughs> intemperate in some of my tweets. Oh, no. I'm sorry about some of the language. However, <laughs> I was right on the law. Um, and that is, look, even the War Powers Act, which many say is unconstitutional. Every president, I believe, has said it's but unconstitutional. But we need to get into that. But that is purportedly a restriction on the president's right. power to deploy military forces. Even that says we can't do anything about a president repelling an attack on the nation. Right. That's what we're dealing with here. We're losing more people to heroin and fentanyl overdoses every year than we lost in the entire course of the Vietnam War. 116 um, a day through 2000. 16, and it's been rising at 54 percent in most of the major cities across this country yes. since then. And I would recommend to anyone interested in the topic, um, I don't usually recommend liberal journalists, but it happens to be a fantastic book. Be careful book. here. Be careful. Sam Quinones' book, right. Dreamland. Yeah. Um, he was a long time, in fact, I quote him in Adios America. He's a great reporter. He has a great book on the opioid crisis and heroin and fentanyl. Mm -hmm. And you'll see 98% of the heroin and fentanyl is coming from Mexico. It's a problem of not having a wall on our border. Well, it's very simple. I mean, it really is simple. And I, I agree with you about his reporting. But the, the reality has been with us for too long. That border is where most of the methamphetamines, marijuana, heroin, and cocaine uh, come from. Yes. Uh, and until we stop it, we are literally deciding that millions of young Americans will be uh, collateral damage yes. to the principles of someone's open border fantasy. Yes, and meanwhile, and I... That is our nightmare. I, right. Um, and meanwhile, I mean, people objecting to this, they're, they're fine with, you know, emergency actions to take out Panamanian dictator Manuel Noriega or um, an emergency bombing of Syria or emergency, you know, escorting of ships without the president going to Congress. Well, or, as or I ISIS. The, as I, I recall, the left was apoplectic at each of those events. Then those Not all of them. Well, not really, to, not bombing Libya. Well, I don't want to. In any it. event. And let's focus here. Let's focus. This on is the what the issue is, but Lou. The, Everyone is attacking Trump for. Picking you're attacking up Trump for crying out loud day in and day you out. Again, finishing the sentence. You may attack the president when he does not keep his promises. I think you that may, is an appropriate thing to you do. You can attack the attacking president whenever you want to. It's America for, for being crying out wrong loud. on the Constitution is not what I am doing. He is right on the Constitution, the people I am attacking, and that's why all of these actions by the chief executive to go You have been talking bomb. about the president as if he had absolutely broken every promise on the campaign trail. No, I think been I've been severely. quite clear about which promises he has broken, to build a wall and deport illegals. And by the way, I'm glad you're talking to, since you won't let me tell you, what the constitutional basis is and how ridiculous the really attacks on this are. Because I have but a I will very say, good idea, and so does this audience, of what the powers of the United States president okay, are. Okay, then we'll skip that, and I yes. would like to commend you. And actually, I think this is the problem with Trump keeping his promises on immigration for having Peter Navarro on. I mean, well, in you. the case of the White House, or the trade issue, um, at the White House, you have Peter Navarro and you have Wilbur Ross. They are fantastic. They are giving the president good advice. When it comes to immigration, there is no one in the White House giving him good advice. Everyone, it is 10 feet deep with people who oppose the wall, who want to amnesty dreamers, and none of that's Someone happened. has convinced this president that DACA is not a Democratic issue, but one that he can seize from the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And I happen to agree with you here. Whoever is advising that, uh, that somehow 
uh, Hispanics and illegal immigrants will convert suddenly to the Republican Party. Uh, well, first of all, they must drink with Paul Ryan uh, in <laughs> order to get that delusional. Uh, or and, Carl and, Rove. And they're absolute fools. <laughs> yes. uh, okay. So, and, and by the way, those fools are often funded by uh, the person you ma mentioned, Carl Rove, and his, yeah. all of his buddies at the Chamber of Commerce and the Business Roundtable. It, but it, more important even than the trade issue was obviously the promise to build the wall. He has the authority. He needs to listen to the right people. And, I mean, the Washington Post just reported that a Pentagon official says we can't build the wall without congressional approval. The, the guy's a moron, and you shouldn't be listening to drooling, incontinent morons when you're fulfilling your most Who crucial... are you calling a moron? Well, the, unfortunately, the Washington Post didn't identify I the didn't Pentagon identify their official. Source. Though well, I'm demanding his name. there's only one name. person over there who could make that such a... <laughs> bold statement, wouldn't we think? Uh, but certainly General Mattis would not, because I'm certain he wouldn't want to It was Pentagon to... official, who yeah. knows? Yeah. Yeah. It couldn't be Jerry Well, he Kushner. is the one official that... Because he's uh, running the entire him. government. Uh, <laughs> let, let's turn to... You called him a shallow, lazy ignoramus, uh, just for the record, and, and now you seem to make, be making some sort of accord. Uh, with him. No, are, are I, you, yeah, before we go uh, too far down. I called him that during the campaign and in Trump uh -huh. we trust. That was part of the reason. And have quoted yourself ever since. Him. Yes, I have been. Um, no, but that was part of the reason we trusted him. I mean, something, a, a switch changed with him. As I described in Chapter 2, um, yes, we might have wanted a more elegant person to make these arguments. We're voting for him for the policies. And then I realized... Well, I sure as hell didn't. I, and millions well, of other Americans what didn't want an elegant... Okay, again, was halfway through the sentence. And then you realize... Hurry, hurry to the best part. And then you realize... An elegant person wouldn't have said the things he was saying. It was precisely that he was so coarse that allowed him to make these, s say these cr incredibly courageous things. He didn't care what Manhattan elites thought of him. I can't tell if as you're coming down for or against House, course because then he said As soon as he gets to things. the White House, suddenly all he wants is the approval of the Manhattan fancy people. He sure didn't care for the 18 months he was running. So the shallow course ignoramus, yes, it was a selling point because he didn't care what people thought of him. Now all he wants is for Goldman Sachs to like him. Yeah, well, I don't know what happened, but that's a different president. I haven't changed. Approbation complexes are never attractive in any <laughs> uh, and, and, and unfortunately, I believe that there is some truth to the fact that there are those in the White House who would like to guide him toward uh, this, uh, this liberal fantasy uh, that is a nightmare for America and has proved to be such for our middle class, which has been dwindling for the past 20 years. Yes. Under this president, they're starting to grow and money is starting to come in and we're starting to see housing prices rise. Everything gets better old. with a wall on deportations. Immigration yeah. makes everything easier. Entitlements, the drug problem, um, theft of government oh, entitlements. services. Oh, Ever Ryan hasn't rights. even started on entitlements and you must leave some of your venom for him. Well, uh, Paul Ryan? Uh -huh. um, well, if you would. I will. Um, my venom toward him is instead of bringing in lots of immigrants who then bring in their elderly relatives who immediately go on Medicare and Social Security and then tell Americans you have to tighten your belt. We're raising the retirement age. How about don't raise the retirement age but limit Social Security and Medicare to Americans. Well, that'd be radical and, <laughs> and probably unconstitutional in the, in the view of Javier Becerra. Everything is easier if you fix immigration. You know, I find everything easier with this president in the White House doing his very level he best. He needs a few other people in the White House who don't oppose a, everything he said about immigration during the campaign. A terrific recommendation. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, we, want, and we want to see the Ann Coulter list. <laughs> Of recommendations. Oh, I've got a long Let's list, and well, I'm not on them. I'm not looking a, for a job. I, I know you're not, but <laughs> let me get. Let me have your list. We'll put it up on the uh, on the screen. No, not I want right you to now. give it to the president. Uh, we will we give don't it need to the it president. On the I want we it on the screen. The, I will these put are it, the people he's I'll hired. I'll put it in the finest parchment and hand it to the president. <laughs> and Calder, always great to see you. Great Thanks to for being see with you. Us.